The Space Shuttle Orbiter is an iconic symbol of human space exploration, and we haven't seen anything like its unique design since its retirement in 2011. But now, at Sierra Nevada Corporation's facility in Colorado, engineers are in the beginning stages of assembling the new space plane, fondly known as Dream Chaser. This vehicle is actually one of NASA's Commercial Resupply Services II contract recipients, and it will join the fleet of utility spacecraft like SpaceX's Dragon capsule and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus module, both of which hold the important task of transporting cargo to the International Space Station. But there's one key difference, and it's that Dream Chaser is shaped like a plane, and SNC aims to land it back to Earth just like one too. This design allows for the space plane to be reused 15 times or more, which reduces costs and allows for quick turnaround between missions. But what makes the Dream Chaser so enticing is that it's capable of supporting a variety of needs. It can land on runways used for passenger planes, carry various loads of cargo, support a microgravity lab, and dispose of waste from the ISS. Now, the distinction starts within its aerodynamic structure. Dream Chaser is a lifting body spacecraft. In typical aircraft, the wings are what help create lift and keep the plane airborne. But with Dream Chaser, the lift is created from air pressure on the underside of its body, which is wide, flat, and equipped with heat-resistant silica-based tiles and a new material called Tough Rock. So when Dream Chaser returns to Earth from, for example, a resupply mission, the resistance of its fall will help the craft come down with a steady glide, no extra power needed. Lifting body spacecraft have less gravitational forces working against the plane during re-entry. We're talking a max of 1.5 Gs, which is less than most roller coasters. So landing is now easier on sensitive scientific experiments on board. Plus, gliding allows for touchdown to be on a runway rather than crashing into the ocean. The plane also uses a non-toxic propellant, which lets it land anywhere in the world a Boeing 737 airliner can. Dream Chaser will be utilizing SNC's upper stage Vortex engine, which is low cost and uses less toxic fuels that can ignite at high altitudes. And since the chemicals involved are non-toxic, there can be an immediate turnaround once it lands. In comparison, for older space shuttle orbiters that used hydrazine, it would take around 30 minutes before people could approach the vehicle, and even then they had to wear suits. Other noteworthy parts of the spacecraft are its ability to hold up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized essential cargo like food, water, and science experiments, which will be the largest of any cargo carrier. Compared to Dragon cargo missions that have been averaging around 1,500 kilograms of pressurized cargo and Cygnus with the highest load of 3,700 kilograms, the Dream Chaser is a bit of a powerhouse. It can get this big because it has a separate cargo module that is specifically designed to be filled with about 3,400 kilograms of waste from the ISS. This garbage module will be released during descent and burn up into the atmosphere. On Dream Chaser itself, it's set to return up to 1,800 kilograms of work, some of which could be scientific experiments just conducted on the descent itself. See, the Dream Chaser can also be an intermittent space lab, either docked onto the ISS or while it's experiencing microgravity on its way back down to Earth. Experiments that don't need long duration space exposure could take advantage of this and gather their data immediately rather than wait months before another cargo mission brought their equipment back. So now you might be asking yourself, if this space plane hits all the key points, why has it taken so long to get here? Well, the Dream Chaser team has had a long journey. The design concept was resurrected from past lifting body planes, but it really took off when NASA asked private companies to create space taxis to ferry astronauts to and from the ISS. So SNC actually created the Dream Chaser to be a crewed vehicle, but in 2014, NASA selected SpaceX and Boeing for their commercial crew contracts. But SNC took the Dream Chaser and redesigned it to be the cargo vehicle we are excited for today and was able to nab a cargo contract with NASA to fly six missions to the ISS through 2024. Now in 2019, Dream Chaser continues to pass milestones and the version that will take to the skies is being assembled as we speak. When it's ready for takeoff, the plane will sit atop ULA's new launcher, the Vulcan Centaur rocket, with plans to begin ferrying cargo in 2021. This next generation space plane may very well be the new icon of human spaceflight for years to come. If you like this episode, make sure to subscribe and check out our Countdown to Launch playlist where you can catch up on all your rocket launch news. Are there any other rocket launches you'd like us to cover? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.